Is there a recession about to happen? And if it is, what can you do about it? Hi, my name is Dee and welcome to the Money Growth Academy. This is where we demystify the stock market, simplify investing, and multiply your opportunities for financial success. And today we're gonna to talk about, is the recession coming? And one of the tools we're gonna help us evaluate that is called a yield curve. So we're gonna take the mystery out of the yield curve. And if you caught some of the economic news or at least some of the market news ending last Friday, there was a lot to talk about the yield curve. So we're gonna take the mystery out of the yield curve. So what exactly is a yield curve? It's a line plotting across yields, right? Across maturities. And when we're talking about maturities, we're talking about the age of these T-bills. As they age, how that's being affected across this graph. And we're gonna tell you how that plays out and how that affects or how it, in, how it serves as an indicator to whether or not a recession might be around the corner. All right, so let's talk about this. This, how, this is how it works. So to understand this, what I wanna do is give you what a typical yield curve looks like. A typical yield curve looks like this. Now I'm using a flat line yield curve to indicate this. It's the simplest way to show this. But as you can see, the, the shorter the term of the T-bill, right, the lower the rate, right, the lower the yield, the lower the yield. And as we age, as we go to these longer term, right, these could be 10, 15, these could be 30. I'm using 10 as an example here. But to attract me to come to this 10 year, right, if I'm going to be a bondholder, you're going to have to entice me with a higher yield, right? You have to, you're going to have to attract me with a much higher yield to get me to be willing to hold on to that 10 year. So you got to entice me. And so to entice me, what happens is those yields are offered at a higher rate for that reason. That's a typical yield curve that you would see. Now this is what has changed. So I showed you what a typical curve looks like, right? That's a typical curve. Everything's going fine. But this other thing, it's called an inverted, inverted yield curve. It does something slightly different. So an inverted yield curve, let's talk about how that's different than a typical. So an inverted simply means that these, these 10 years, so again, I'm using a flat line curve, that's what that looks like. What that means is what it flip-flops, right? Where before we were talking about this, right? So this is typical. That's a typical yield curve and a good market. This one here, right? This is inverted. And so Friday, what happened is for the first time since November 2006, it inverted. And let's talk about what is the impact of that and exactly what is inverted. So the basis of it, look here, before I told you the short-term T-bills here, the short-term T-bills, they paid less, right? You see that? So if we were going up here and across here, this would be less than 1%, right? So it's less. And then the 10 years, right? They would pay more. Right, so the long terms would pay more. But what's happened in reverse is these three months, okay, these short term ones right here, well now they're paying more, right? And so because they're paying more, then the long terms are paying less. The problem with that, as I, I may have mentioned earlier, and if I didn't, I wanna mention it here, the problem with that is less bondholders are willing to hold those long-term bonds, right? Those 10, 15, 30-year bonds. And the reason that could be is because what they're afraid of, they're a little bit, they could be a little less certain about the economic future. And so because of that, 
they're willing, they're kind of pulling back a little bit. And then when this short term pays better than long term, that's when we have an inverted yield curve. And really what that is, it's a difference in spread. All right, so let's break this down a little bit easier. Even I, what I think is easier so you can see it. I know some people don't understand curves and graphs, but I just wanted to show you just from a graph standpoint, for those of you that understand graphs and curves, how a typical uh, yield curve works and a more, what, we, what we're experiencing right now, at least as of Friday, an inverted curve. So one of the ways to understand that is this. So this is just numerically. So this is the three month, okay? So the three month yield right now, as of Friday, ended at 246. The 10 year ended at 244. That means that you had 0 0.02. That's the inversion. Whenever the three month is paying more than the 10 year, that's when it inverts. That's when it inverts. So that's what we're talking about here is when the three month, a short term yield pays more than a 10 year. And that's what freaks investors out. Well, the reason is, is because it's, it's, highly, it's been proven to be highly predictive, particularly these two numbers right here. When they use a three month and a 10 year, it's been proven highly predictive. And so when this inverts, we typically like this paying higher than this, but it inverted on Friday. The challenge with that, again, is that people want to, investors, bond investors want to be in these shorter term, these shorter term bonds. So as I mentioned, this, this is the spread. It's the difference between the short term and the long term. That's what's called a spread, okay? So that's what's called a spread. So let's talk about why this, why this bothers investors. So the last time this happened, I believe was about 2000, about 2000, 2001. It happened again, right about 2006. And we look like we're just about there here in 2018. And what I mean by is that the spread where the three month is now paying more than the ten, than the long term. The short term is paying better than the long term. Now, typically within 12 to 14 months, historically, of this happening, 12 to 14 months of that happening, we're in a recession. That's what's freaking everybody out. So we know we're floating on some money, right? There's been some quantitative, quantitative easing that's been taking place to 2008 to kind of flip it back up, right? The, the, the market's back up and the economy back up. And so we're really in uncharted territory right now as to handle this because, you know, what do you do? Do you do more quantitative easing to fix this? And, and if you didn't catch the news last week, the, the feds not only talked about halting, right, any further increases through this year and next year, but potentially lowering rates again. So we might see that again. So this is why it's, this is why it's very concerning about this inversion, right, this inverted yield curve. And now let's talk about now, why should you care? And this, this is a couple of reasons. Number one, right, I look for a signal for a market that might be going the wrong way. And that is, I look at consumer debt. So consumer debt tells me one thing. It generally follows government debt, right? So what I mean by that, when the debt numbers get so high, when they hit a new high, then somebody hits the reset button and the whole thing has to start all over. It's just like this. So assume you're, you know, you're an individual and you've racked up some credit cards. At some point in time, you've racked up enough credit card debt that you start to feel uncomfortable. And because you feel uncomfortable, you decide that, hey, we need to actually pay off some of this debt. Well, the government gets in that same situation and so do people. 
And so when, what happens is, is when consumers start feeling overwhelmed by debt, well, what do they start doing? Well, they start to save, right? And they start to try to pay off some of this debt because they know they're in the danger zone with that debt. So this back in September, if you go back and you look this up, you'll find out that consumer debt hit its highest peak. It, it peaked over what happened in prior to 2008. So consumer debt is four trillion seventeen billion. So it's four trillion dollars. Four trillion dollars is where consumer debt. It was two, that's where it ended 2018. And then just to give you an idea, pre-2008, it was two two billion six eighty-eight, I believe. I'm sorry, two trillion six eighty-eight. It's now double that in 2018. So again, that was the first signal in September. So I started to take some positions because this is a really strong indicator of what's going to happen in the market in the coming 12 to 14 months. And then this happened on March 22nd. And that is the yield curve inverted. Right? So where we have short-term paying higher rates than long-term. So these things indicate, these things indicate that a recession is highly, highly probable. Can I tell you for sure that it's gonna happen? Well, as I told you in 2000, about 2000 or so, uh, again in 2006, uh, and it goes back beyond that as well, but in this kind of a new economy, it's, it's highly probable. So you as an investor, what should you, should you do? Well, look, this, this channel, right, the Money Growth Academy, again, we always say this, this is for education and entertainment purposes only. We are not a, we do not have any financial um, knowledge about your situation. So we're not telling you what to do. But for me, this is, raises a lot of caution, extreme caution, right? So if you're a new investor, you want to be very, very cautious. I mean, I just talked about last week, I talked about Boeing. And if you haven't seen those videos, right, should you buy, should you buy Boeing? If you haven't seen those two videos, part one, part two, I do a full analysis on Boeing and whether or not you should buy, or at least I should buy. And I give you my conclusion at the end. But I'm going to tell you these two things here, the new levels of consumer debt, and now this yield curve that inverted, I'd be very cautious uh, of spending, of putting any money in the market right now, at least any more money. Uh, am I going to run? No, because we know kind of, we understand some things uh, about the market long term. Uh, I don't need, don't know if I need to run. Now, if I'm holding some stuff that I don't particularly like uh, and it really doesn't fit my portfolio, yeah, I, I'm probably going to make some decisions about those things. But good companies, they're going to weather bad storms. And that's how I feel about it. So I hope this was uh, helpful for you all. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like the analysis. If you'd like to hear more about this, we'll be happy to share that with you. Make sure you drop us some comments. And again, ring that bell down there. Hit that notification so the next video that we have available, you'll have a chance to, uh, to take a look at that. But go back, take a look at our, our Boeing part one and part two. And you get a, a better sense of what I've talked about here. But guys, in a nutshell, an inverted yield curve just simply means that the short term, right? Short term T-bills are paying more than the long term. That's a challenge. And it's a challenge because they're not investors, bond investors aren't willing to, to, to kind of play out to the future. That, that gives the, a level of risk. And I can guarantee you, if that thing doesn't come up above the line next week, there's going to be a whole lot of talk. And the talking heads on TV, they're going to try to hold you a little longer in the market than maybe you should. But again, make your own decision. These are some telltale signs. 
that really historically have proven out. We'll catch you next time.